Hello everyone. Welcome to the MOOCs program on Criminal Justice Administration. Hope you all are uh, simultaneously reading other modules on Criminal Justice Ad Administration. Myself Mukul Raizada, I am Assistant Professor Law in National Law University, Delhi. Today I will start with uh, the module on Criminal Justice Administration and will focus upon the types of trials under Criminal Procedure Code. The learning objective for this module is to provide detail in knowledge about different stages through which session trial, trial of warrant case, trial of summons case and summary trial proceeds. The second objective is to get the conceptual understanding of procedural differences in the modes in which these various trials are conducted. The third and the last learning objective of this module is to get an insight into significant stages of these trials and especially into the inbuilt safeguards that are provided to do the complete justice to the accused so that he gets reasonable opportunity to defend his case. So to begin with, the types of trials that are provided in the criminal procedure codes are basically four. The first and the most important trial is the session trial. The second trial is the trial of warrant case by magistrate and this trial can further be divided into trial of cases instituted on police report and the trial of cases instituted otherwise than on police report that is the complaint cases. The third type of trial is the trial of summons cases and the third trial is the summary trial. So the important steps in the trial before the court of sessions are the opening of case by public prosecutor followed by the discharge of the accused then if he is not discharged the framing of charge by the session judge the conviction on plea of guilt the date for prosecution evidence evidence for prosecution acquittal entering upon defense argument and finally judgment of acquittal or conviction Taking up the first step, that is the opening case for prosecution. This first step is very significant and the public prosecutor has to play an important role since the court provides that every session trial is to be conducted by the prosec public prosecutor only. If in a case the complainant or the victim appoints his counsel, then so the role of the complainant counsel or the counsel appointed by the victim is very limited and that too begins with the permission of the public prosecutor and he has to act under the supervision of the public prosecutor. Prosecution case uh, begins with the prosecutor describing the offense committed, the brief summary of leading facts and the evidence upon which the prosecution wants to rely for the case. The second stage in the session trial comes in the form of the discharge of the accused person. After considering the record of the case and the document produced by the prosecution and also after hearing of the submission of both the parties, if the magistrate thinks that the, there is no prima facie case made out by the prosecution he may discharge the accused person. In Dilawar Babu Kurne versus State of Maharashtra Supreme Court 2002, the court said that while discharging an accused person, the court has to consider the broad probabilities of the case and total effect of evidence and the court should look out for the basic infirmities. The next stage, if the court decides not to discharge the accused person, is the stage of framing of charge. While making up mind for the framing of charge, the session judge has only to rely upon the material submitted by the investigating agencies and produced by the prosecution. The evidence on which the accused is relying is, is not to be considered at this stage. In state of Madhya Pradesh versus Sheetla Sahai, Supreme Court 2009, the court held that the truth, the veracity, the effect of evidence and the probative value of material produced is not to be meticulously judged 
at the time of framing of charge and on the face value of the evidence this decision is to be taken whether to frame the charge or not. If court thinks that charges are to be framed that then the court will frame the charge and those charges are to be read out to the accused person and accused is asked whether he pleads guilty to the charge. The next stage is the conviction on the plea of guilt of the accused person. When the court asks the accused whether he pleads guilty for the, uh, for the charges framed, the accused can remain silent, he may plead guilty or he may claim to be tried. If the courts want to con convict the accused person, his guilty plea should be clear and unqualified. Un Otherwise, he cannot be convicted on ambiguous plea. The next stage is the evidence for prosecution. When the court proceeds with the trial or the accused person demands that he needs to be tried, then the court will set the date for the prosecution. Once the prosecution evidence begins, the recording of prosecution evidence is to be conducted without break and if at all any adjournment is to be given is only to be given for the pressing reasons. And also the prosecution evidence, all the evidence should be produced by the prosecution side. In Bunty Alias Guddu versus State of Madhya Pradesh Supreme Court 2004, it was held that the prosecution cannot refuse to call any witness on the ground that his evidence is inconsistent with the prosecution story which may lead to adder, adverse in, inference drawn against the prosecution. The, uh, the session judge has the discretion to defer the cross-examination of the prosecution witness or has the discretion to recall for further cross-examination of any prosecution witness upon the request of the defense side. One of the important powers that have been given to the court during the trial is the power under section 311 in the form of the court's power to summon, recall, re-examine material witnesses or even examine any person who is present during the trial. In Zahira Habibullah Sheikh versus State of Gujarat Supreme Court 2006, the court said that this, this discretionary power gives no right in any party to claim relief under this section 311 and this power should strictly be exercised judicially. But if court thinks that the evidence is needed by it for a just decision of the case, then court can exercise this power at any stage and can call any person to examine him even if he is not a witness. The next stage after the close of the prosecution evidence is the stage of examination of the accused person under section 313. This is very important stage in any trial. The court has power to examine the accused person to enable him to explain anything against him in the evidence. The section 313 provides that court may at any stage put questions to the accused but the, after the close of the prosecution evidence, accused shall generally be questioned. In Surinder Singh versus State of Uttar Pradesh, Allahabad High Court 2010, the court laid down that each incriminating circumstance that has come up after the prosecution evidence is to be put in simple manner and separately to enable him to know case against him and for which explanation is needed. <clears throat> the next stage after examination of the accused person is the stage of acquittal which is very peculiar to the session trial. After closing of the prosecution evidence and ex exercise of the power by the court in the form of examination of witnesses under section 311 or compliance of section 313 and after hearing the argument of both the parties, court has to apply his mind to consider whether there is sufficient evidence indicating commission of an offense by the accused person or there is no evidence. What is no evidence has been held in K. Moidu versus State of Kerala, Kerala High Court 2009 as meaning no legal evidence of proof implying that even if evidence is proved, it would not constitute the offense charged. After the court is convinced that there is no case made out against the accused, even after the prosecution's evidence, 
the court will grant acquittal to the accused person. But if the court does not grant acquittal to the accused person, the, the defense will be asked to enter upon the evidence. The defense evidence in case of non-acquittal will follow to the next stage. And during the defense evidence, the session judge is required to maintain the order sheet which reflects all the procedure that have been followed in the form of issuing of summons or the issue of process for attendance of the defense witness or in case the, uh, the defense does not want to lead any evidence in its favor, then affect with respect to that willingness on part of the defense. The defense can also apply for, for the adjournment of the case for production of documents and for issuance of the process for attendance of the defense witness. The next stage after the completion of the defense witness is the stage of ar argument. In this stage, the prosecution will sum up the case in the sense that it will highlight all the evidences that have come up on record which goes against the story of this, uh, the defense and the defense will reply to all the charges led by the prosecution. And during the reply, if defense has raised some point of law, then prosecution will again be given an opportunity to make su submission addressing those points of law. Now we reach to the conclusion of the session trial stage. The session trial concludes either in the form of the judgment of acquittal or in the form of the judgment of conviction. If it is judgment of conviction, then the judgment of conviction shall be delivered on the day, but the sentencing will be deferred because the accused needs to be heard on the question of sentence. And while deciding the sentence, whole lot of sociological considerations are to be taken into account and the accused is to be heard on the question of sentence and this condition is very significant and if it is not compliant then it cannot be cured under section 465 that was held in state of Bihar versus Rajkumar Mahato, Patna High Court 2006. If prosecution wants to bring on record the instance of prior conviction against the accused person, then accused shall be again questioned on the enhanced punishment. Now we come on to the next type of trial that is a trial of warrant case by magistrate. As I have discussed earlier, the trial of warrant case by the magistrate can be of two types. The first being the trial where the cases are instituted on police report and second the trial of warrant case where the cases are instituted otherwise than on police report that primarily deals with the complaint cases. The trial of warrant case instituted on police report has different stages. The first being the compliance with section 207 where various copies of the documents are given. The second being the discharge of the accused followed by the framing of charge, conviction on plea of guilt, evidence for prosecution and evidence for defense. This is more or less similar to the session trial, but you will find a remarkable difference that there is no stage of acquittal after the close of the prosecution evidence. Now we take up the individual stages in detail. So when the case come up before the magistrate as a trial case, the magistrate will see that all the documents like FIR, police report, all the statement recorded are provided and a copy of these documents are provided to the accused person so that he knows what he has to fight against for. And after going through these documents, if the magistrate is of the view that there is no indication of any prima facie case, then he may discharge the accused person or if there are groundless charges emerging from the accusation. The, ground, the indication of groundless charges comes up from the case where there is no legal evidence in support of the acquisition or evidence is contraindicated or facts do not make out any offense at all. Then the case becomes of groundless charges. But the magistrate has to apply his mind after consideration of the police report and the document presented before him, after hearing of the argument of both the parties and Particularly, if certain facts or circumstances in the documents 
need explanation before framing of charge, then judicial magistrate in his discretion can examine the accused person. <coughs> the next stage is the stage of framing of charge. If the magistrate finds that the prosecution case has been made out prima facie, then as per state of Orissa versus Habibullah Khan Supreme Court 2003, the court mandated that if the material justifies framing of charge, court has to form its opinion for the framing of charges. And when the court frames the charges, charges are to be read out to the accused person. The next stage is again the conviction on plea of guilt, where the, the accused shall be asked whether he pleads guilty or not. And if the accused pleads for guilty, that shall not influence the sentencing outcome of the case. After framing of charges, if the accused person claims to be tried and he does not plead guilty, the magistrate shall fix the date for the prosecution evidence and on the request of the prosecution shall issue processes for securing the presence of witnesses or production of documents. And thereafter, the court shall proceed for ex examination of prosecution witnesses. <coughs> the next stage in the trial of warrant cases instituted on police report is the the stage of evidence for defense. After the close of the prosecution evidence, both the prosecution and the defense can file, can submit the written statements and those written statements are to be filed with the record by the magistrate and on the application of the defense, the court shall issue the process for the presence of witnesses or for the production of documents as requested by the defense side. But the magistrate can also refuse to issue the process if it appears to him that these requests are made for causing delay in the trial. On the request of the defense side, the magistrate can also recall for the witness for cross-examination in the interest of justice. But for this, the defense side can be asked to make the deposit for the, of, uh, for the expenses that are to be incurred by the witnesses in the recall. Now, at this stage, we will move on to the next type of trial, that is the trial of warrant cases instituted otherwise than on police report, that is the complaint cases. I hope you have gone through the other modules on complaint cases where the cognizance is taken on complaint there under section 200, 202, 204, how the complaint, how the complainant records his evidence how the magistrate take cognizance on those complaints. In the light of those discussion, I will proceed here for the trial of warrant cases instituted otherwise than on police report. So, after the cognizance on, on complaint has been taken, the magistrate shall fix the date for the evidence of prosecution under section 244 and magistrate will proceed to hear the prosecution case and he will examine all the prosecution witnesses and if required on the request of the prosecution, that is the complainant side, he will issue process for the other witnesses that are remaining to be examined. After recording of the evidence of the prosecution side, the magistrate, if he thinks that no case is made out, he may discharge the accused person. But while discharging, he has to record the reasons. Now the discharge for the accused in this particular type of trial can happen because of various reasons. The first being that the very early stage, if my states find out of the complaint that has been put up before him, that there are the groundless charges and facts mentioned in the complaint do not constitute offense, then he may discharge the accused person. Or if evidence that has been proposed to be given by the complaint inside would not be sufficient to prove the guilt of the accused person or if the process is issued against the accused person under the mistaken belief that the offense has been committed. And lastly, if after taking all the prosecution evidence, if it appears to the magistrate that no case is made out at all, then he may discharge the accused person. But as I said earlier, the reasons has to be recorded for this. But if the magistrate decides to frame the charges, then he needs to again read out the charges to the accused person 
and should ask the accused if he pleads guilty. If the accused decides to be tried, then the magistrate will again ask him if he wants to cross-examine any witness that has already been examined before he was brought before the court. Because at the cognizance stage, there are chances that the magistrate has already examined the complainant and few of his witnesses. So, the accused person shall get an opportunity to cross-examine further those witnesses that already have been examined by the magistrate. After closing of the prosecution evidence, now comes the stage of the evidence for the defense, where the accused person shall lead all his defense and magistrate shall record that. From this stage, we again move on to the common stages of both the trial, that is the trial instituted on the police report and the trial instituted otherwise than on police report. And these are the common stages which apply to both type of trial. These stages are after closing of the defense evidence, now the stage comes up for either for the conviction judgment or the acquittal judgment of the accused. If accused is to be convicted, as I said earlier in the session trial, he shall not be uh, given a sentence order on the same date. The sentence order shall be deferred and after hearing the accused on the question of sentence and if the prosecution wants to bring on record the instance of previous conviction of the accused person, then the separate hearing will be given to the accused person on both the account. Another important stage in the trial of the warrant case instituted otherwise than on police report that is on the complaint case is the stage of discharge or, or the adjournment if there is absence of the complainant. So if the complainant is absent on, the, on any given date where the charges have not been framed so far, the magistrate has discretion to discharge the accused person. But if the charges are framed and the complainant on the given date thereafter remains absent, then the magistrate can adjourn the case if his absence can be done away with. So, the next type of trial is the trial of summons cases. This type of trial requires some simple procedures because the cases that are tried as summons cases are not that serious and do not entail harsher punishment. So, the formalities of framing of charges has been simplified and has been substituted by the substance of accusation to be recorded under section 251. But the accusation has to be recorded in a clear statement as to the offense or facts constituting offense. Recording of the statement should show particular that have been explained to the accused person as to what are the offenses charged he is facing the trial for. The next stage in the summons case is the conviction on plea of guilt. Now the conviction uh, of the accused on plea of guilt is to be recorded in exact words of the accused on the very same date and not out of the memory of the magistrate. It should be recorded exactly in the same words that has been used by the accused person. But the magistrate has discretion in summons cases to convict the accused on his guilty plea or if he does not believe the guilty plea then he can proceed to hear the case and try the accused. The conviction on plea of guilt in the absence of accused in Petty cases under section, if the accused has been summoned under section 206 of the criminal procedure court, then his presence is not required. The accused can be convicted when he pleads guilty and sends the fine amount together with the guilty plea through the post and the magistrate can consider that plea along with the fine amount sent to him and may convict the accused person. When the accused person is not convicted on plea of guilt, then the magistrate shall proceed with the prosecution evidence. He will issue the processes to summon the witnesses or to procure the documents. 
but for this the magistrate can ask for the deposition of expenses that are to be incurred by the persons who are called for the examinations. After the, uh, after the examination, the accused is heard and his evidence is recorded. The evidence of the accused or the prosecution is not recorded word by word as in the case of the warrant cases or the session trial, but a memorandum of substance of the evidence in the language of the court is recorded by the magistrate. This is how the summons case are different from the previous two type of trials because they do away with lot of technicalities and the lengthy procedure. Now the summons trials are reached to the stage of conclusion in various methods. One is when the accused person is acquitted or convicted. Accused can be convicted for other offenses also under the same chapter if he is not thereby prejudiced. Secondly, in case of non-appearance or the death of the complainant, the accused can be acquitted or the hearing can be adjourned and the attendance of the complainant can be dispensed with. Another significance of the, session, uh, of the summons trial is withdrawal of the complaint. If the complainant is able to show that there are sufficient grounds for withdrawal, the magistrate can allow the withdrawal of the complaint, but he has to record the reasons for the same. Similarly, the court has the power to stop the proceedings in between and acquit the accused person or discharge the accused person. Even the court has power to convert summons cases if they are not punishable with more than six months of punishment into warrant cases. Now the last type of trial that is given in this criminal procedure code is the summary trial. This summary trial basically is the speedy trial. Summons cases procedure is normally followed but in much more simpler form and which is highlighted in the form of the changes made in, in how the records are prepared during the trial, how the evidence is recorded during the trial and how the judgment is delivered. So everything right from the preparation of record to the recording of evidence and to the judgment, everything has been made more simple in the summary trials. These type of trials are done by the judicial discretion, but this judicial discretion is limited to the specific class of magistrate and they are the chief judicial magistrate or the metropolitan magistrate or the magistrate of the class 1 if specifically empowered by the high court. But this, judi this judicial discretion of conducting a summary trial is to be exercised judiciously and with due care. There is a limitation on sentencing power also which is mandated under CRPC for the summary trials. How the records are to be made in the summary trial? The records of the evidence and every proceeding is to, made, is to be made by the magistrate under his own handwriting. And the recording of the substance of evidence is to be done by the magistrate. Only substance of the evidence is to be recorded by the magistrate and he has to judiciously select the part of the evidence upon which he wants to rely for reaching to the conclusion of convicting the accused person or acquitting the accused person. The judgment should contain a brief statement of reasons and those reasons should ref uh, refer to the evidence in the language of the court. So every evidence and the substance of evidence is to be recorded in the language of the court. The judgment should consist a brief statement of reasons and those re uh, reasons should refer to the evidence upon which the magistrates want to rely. That is how the four type of trials are conducted and are provided under criminal procedure code.